Hey guys and what's up? In today's video we're going to try to customize the N Pro. I reviewed this little keyboard a few weeks ago and I invite you to check out my review if you haven't already. And while this little guy looks like a conventional 60% mechanical keyboard, its crew layout is a bit unconventional so we'll try to see if it fits in a regular GH60 case. It also has scale box switches, the original versions, and these are supposedly a bit fragile, so we'll be careful when switching out the keycaps. And these are supposed to not be compatible with other keycap profiles than the OEM profile, so they probably won't fit DSA or XDA keycaps, but that's what we'll verify in this video. So without waiting any further, let's go ahead and remove the keycaps. So now that all the keycaps are removed, we can take a look at what's under and you see that there's a nice white metal backplate. It really helps giving the keyboard a solid feel. So as you can see, the case is held with Torx screws, so we'll go ahead and remove them. But first, we'll take a look at a GH60 case to see if the screw layout matches. So as you can see for yourself, there's not a lot of holes that match between the two cases. I think the only ones that would match are maybe this one uh, where you can see here a screw and here it won't match, here there's nothing too. Maybe this one, we'll see if it, uh, if it aligns and then maybe this one too, uh, but this one will be uh, left without a screw and here too. So yeah, we'll go ahead and try to see if it can fit and if it can be screwed in that specific case. We'll also see if the uh, USB port cutout fits as well. It seems to be placed pretty much at the same spot, but uh, we'll see when it's in there. So I removed all the Torx screws and then we're left with the PCB uh, on the other side. So you can see here is the on off switch and we also have a battery that we will have to manage in the other case. And here's another look at the steel plate. As you can see it's pretty thick and everything looks really nice. The solder joints are also really clean, nothing to worry about here. So here we're having a little issue, um, the battery is a bit too thick for the case, so maybe it's because it's a wooden case and there's barely enough room here for anything else. Uh, in a plastic case it would maybe be fine, but in my case it's a bit too thick. Um, when you squish down this, uh, it's still too thick for how high these screws are, so I'll try to find a way to make it fit, maybe remove the foam here, but I guess it's not here for uh, no reason. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's to prevent the battery to be punctured by one of the soldering, soldering joints, but uh, there's already some kind of rubber material here, so I guess we're pretty safe, but yeah, I'll try to remove that foam, see if it fits, otherwise we'll try to see if there's another solution. In the worst case, uh, you could always remove the battery I think and use it only with a cable and it should be fine working that way. Or you could also uh, try to find a battery that's a bit slimmer and that would fit in that case. And again if you're using like something like a plastic case it would maybe be fine already. So. Okay, so I removed pretty much all of the foam there was on the battery, so I'll try to see if it fits now.
Okay, so it still doesn't fit quite perfectly. Uh, as you can see here, I cannot get it to sit flat uh, here, you can see. I think the solution would be to use some sort of like washers on every like screw mounting points so that it's even and it doesn't put pressure on the battery either. Another thing to mention is that I will reuse the Ampro's case screws with this. So this is the screws that came with the Ampro and this is one of the screws that came with the GH60 wooden case. Normally with GH60 boards, uh, you, the screw will block at the PCB level, but with the Ampro, it, it kind of blocks at the plate level. So you gotta compensate for the space between the plate and the PCB, and that's why these screws are longer. So since we're screwing down the Ampro there, we'll need to use these. And fortunately, they're the same thread size, so there's no issues there. But still, I might need to buy longer screws because of the battery kind of issue that makes the PCB go up a bit. So uh, we'll see in the next seconds. So yeah, unfortunately, the screws aren't long enough to compensate for the, the thickness of the battery. So for the purpose of this video, I will remove the battery. So unfortunately, we won't be able to test the Bluetooth performance after the, the customization. So now with the battery removed, we'll go ahead and install the, the PCB as intended. And we'll finally be able to see if the, the layout is okay for this PCB. So I was able to secure down only two of the screws. So this one here and this other one here. So it's not too bad as they're at both ends of the case. I think it fits pretty solid, uh, even that way. And I thought I could do like this one in the middle. Sorry, it's out of focus. Okay. So I thought I could maybe have this one locked down too, but uh, when you put a screw in, it goes down uh, all the way and there's no thread available. So I guess the hole is just slightly off and that's unfortunate, but still not too bad that way. On the other hand, the USB Type-C port seems to be a perfect fit with this case. So that's great. And it means that most GH60 case would probably uh, have the USB uh, port located at the right place for the end pro. So now before reinstalling the keycaps I had in mind for this particular board, I will connect it to my PC to see if the battery was in fact mandatory or if the board can be used without one over USB because it would be kind of a deal breaker in our situation. Okay, so little issue here, uh, the USB Type-C cable doesn't go down all the way, so there's no power that's going to the, the board. So while it's well aligned and it should fit, it doesn't stick out enough. And as you know, many, many of the, uh, the GH60 kind of build have the uh, their USB port kind of sticking out a lot and that's how it fits in a case like that. But with the Ampro, unfortunately, it doesn't stick out enough. So uh, yeah, we're kind of uh, in trouble with that. So I guess for now that the wooden case isn't really a viable option. Uh, you don't get to keep the battery and the cable won't fit unless you kind of make that hole bigger or remove some of the, the wood that's blocking the way. So yeah, it would require kind of a, a lot of DIY stuff and it won't work straight out of the box. So I think for now I will go back to the original case, unfortunately, but uh, we should still be able to replace the keycaps and that, that should work without issues. So uh, I'll go ahead and do that. So now we will still be able to use the battery. So I replugged it in and I'll try to see if the keyboard still has some juice. Okay, so we're getting LEDs. So I guess it's fine. Now I'll reinstall the foam kind of pad the battery originally had and I'll screw the, the plate in the original case as well. And then we'll be ready to install the new keycaps.
So now we'll take a look at the keycaps. So this is one of the original keycaps. Uh, in fact, they're really great. They're PBT double shot, so they won't wear out over time. As you can see, the, uh, the, the white material is in there and the black one is here. But I'll replace these with uh, regular blank PBT keycaps. Uh, like one of these. In fact, I have a little uh, yellow, gray, and black team in mind. Uh, so really not much of an upgrade here, but it's, it's mainly only for the looks. But as you can see, both keycaps are fairly great. The original ones are really good. They don't need to be replaced, but uh, if you want to achieve some sort of team or if you have other uh, key, keycap profiles in mind, uh, then it's a good idea to go with uh, third-party keycaps and they should fit without any issue. But before going further with the, the whole keycap set, uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, I've read online that these specific kill box switches were the original versions, and from what I've read, uh, they seem to be incompatible with specific uh, keycap profiles, so especially DSA, XDA, and stuff like that. The keycap set that I will use as the OEM kind of profile, which is the same uh, than what comes with the N Pro, so we shouldn't have any problem. But I wanted to see if uh, what people said and the, the potential problems were in fact real. So here I have an XDA keycap, uh, which is a really special profile with all the rows having the same kind of profile. So uh, if you install it here, you'll see that it's a bit hard to, uh, to install. There's a bit of resistance when you push down, but it seems to be perfectly compatible and I don't see any issues apart from the fact that I've installed a, a 1U keycap in a 1.25U key, keycap spot so <laughs> that's may maybe the the issue that you could see but other than that it fits perfectly on the switch and i don't see any problem and it's a bit hard to remove so you got to be careful but yeah it's kind of hard to remove <laughs> i wouldn't want to break the the switch so i'll remove it with a with a proper tool but as you can see it it fits without any major issues so I'm not sure what people meant by saying that. So again, here I have a DSA keycap. So this one also has um, the particularity to have all the same profile for every row. Uh, I think it looks really clean, but it's, it might be a bit harder to type on because uh, it's a bit harder to uh, find where you are uh, on the keyboard. So uh, I will try to install it and see if there's any problem. So again, I don't see the issue. It seems to work fine. It bottoms out. There's really like no, no problem here with the switch. So unless the issue is with stabilizers, uh, I think there's really not really a problem with uh, other profiles, at least for the XDA and DSA profile. So really, I wouldn't be scared to order a DSA profile for the AND Pro. It should work fine. And if you actually have the AND Pro with uh, either Gaterons, and I've also seen on AliExpress a version with actual Cherry MX Browns, it was a bit more expensive. I think it was like a hundred bucks instead of 80. Uh, but if you go with either the, uh, the Gaterons or the Cherry MX switches, uh, then I can assure you that you will be fine with keycap profiles that are not the typical OEM uh, standard. So now enough talking, I will actually go ahead and install the keycaps. Okay, so I finally found the uh, six keys that were missing. So these were used in this um, Sweet 16 macro board project. So unfortunately, I will have to find other keycaps to <laughs> replace these. Yeah. So here you go, finally finished. I was a bit disappointed by how hard it was to fit this particular board in another uh, GH60 case. 
So if you plan on doing that, uh, keep in mind that you'll have to DIY some of the parts to make sure everything fits, um, mostly with the, the USB port uh, that's not sticking out enough, and also with the battery to uh, make sure you have enough room in the case so that uh, there's space uh, for it. So that's pretty much it. I'll leave you to some B-roll footage of uh, the, the actual team I went with, uh, the, these keycaps. I'll try to find a matching uh, uh, lighting uh, kind of team too, because this one is clearly not fitting the, uh, the yellow team. So that's pretty much it. Hope it answered uh, most of your questions regarding customizing the, uh, the Ant Pro. This one is the Ant Pro 2. So make sure you leave a like if it did. And otherwise, just let me know what you would like to see regarding the Ant Pro. It's really my keyboard of choice for the moment. I really like it. I think it's super amazing. And as always, I'll have links in the description if you're interested in getting this specific keyboard. So hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like the video if you did. And if you didn't, just let me know why in the comments below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.